CPU Transylvanian Co-Living Audiobook It all started with a dream. After closing down and leaving my first co-living in Cluj, I took the time to explore. I always knew that getting involved in co-living again was in my destiny. I firmly believe in forging my own destiny. My wife and I embraced the digital nomad lifestyle, and over the course of three years, we hopped around a handful of countries. It was all about quality, not quantity. In other words, we slow traveled. In some places, we stayed several months and even returned back to them. In other places, we only stayed one month, which was our minimum. During this whole period of time, I was constantly researching the market, visiting potential locations, and building connections to open up the next co-living space. One day, after ChatGPT became widespread, I had an internal shift in urgency. This new technology urged me to reconsider business strategies and reprioritize. I shifted from creating content to creating experiences. I set a deadline and stuck to it. Looking back, we had very little leverage. Although I had experience in co-living, I didn't have it in the size we were looking at. I approached each space with my business proposition with the intention of assessing the viability of the business and the partnership between the people involved. Eventually, after a lot of intensive research, I found a viable property in Sibiu, Romania. It checked many of the boxes and at the time, no other spaces got even close. We quickly hopped on the opportunity, signed a contract, paid our deposit, and took steps in opening doors. Priority number one, build an asset that we can take with us, a brand. I knew that only as a team could we achieve great things, so I immediately put out offers to find volunteers who would help us grow our brand. What I didn't expect is just quite how much I will learn from working with volunteers. I myself took my first real steps in living abroad as a volunteer and it left a huge positive impact on me. So we started accepting volunteers and as a way, that's how I wanted to give back. Having volunteers can be hugely beneficial but it can also be hugely detrimental. Over time, we've learned how to better identify and select the volunteers so that we are less likely to end up with a bad experience. Admittingly, we didn't always, always manage our volunteers perfectly. We reflected, learned, and improved from these experiences. Over time, we started getting volunteer requests from more and more people with all sorts of backgrounds. It's really quite amazing how some people can truly have such a huge positive impact on you. My personal biggest lessons in opening a second location came from working with volunteers, hands down. One of the most beautiful things in life is sharing experiences with people far and wide. And that's exactly what the co-living brought us. Upon reflection, this thought truly sinks in. At this moment, we are at a tipping point. Anything can happen, which is why I'm writing this. It's precisely in moments like these that I am most vulnerable and I want to share it with the world. Not many people go through such experiences, let alone cataloging it. Authenticity has always been my priority. From creating content to curating experiences, in today's day and age, it's far too easy to skip over the BS and talk only about the nice things. The harsh reality is that life is an emotional roller coaster. For me, it's never been about having a simple and constant ride. It's about the ups and downs and everything in between. This variation in life is what I believe all humans seek on a subconscious level. And I choose to play an active part in this. I always tried my best to approach these experiences with an open mind in order to learn as much as possible. At the end of the day, what we learn cannot be taken from us. I urge all entrepreneurs early in their journey to always remind themselves of this. 
Cultivate the priceless habit of self-reflection to maximize these returns. Education is not cheap, and the best school to attend is the school of doing. Only those with a firm understanding of themselves, their goals in life, and an unbreakable faith in their aspirations will achieve truly great things. Be selective with how you're influenced and by who. Minimize brainwashing that detracts from what you want to achieve. Personally, I do this by carefully curating who I'm surrounded by and the content I'm exposed to. I've removed all forms of content that are pushed onto me that I didn't specifically select. For example, I removed all TVs from my environment. I pay to remove ads on platforms that I use, and they say no very often. I say no to invitations that are not in alignment with my aspirations. Only with a firm understanding of myself am I able to, and I know what to say no to. As you may know, Transylvanian co-living is at the cusp of becoming something else. I, for one, am grateful of the experience with all of its ups and downs. I'm ready for what lies ahead, and I welcome the next challenge. See you soon.